Hey guys, welcome back to Tom Girl. This is episode 44, and I'm so excited for this one. We have the players from the Basketball Beauties League. Stand by. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. A little throwback from uh, Love and yeah, Basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Hey guys, welcome back to Tom Girl. I'm JJ Jurgens. You can follow me at Tom Girl TV. And I am so excited to have the Basketball Beauties Leagues here. Ladies, introduce yourselves. Hey guys, I am your girl Dawn Raven. Uh, you can follow me on any social media platform, all the same at the Dawn Raven. What's up? It's your girl who is Heartbreak. And all my social media is all the same. All my music, um, SoundCloud, everything is who is Heartbreak. Hi guys, my name is Nandi Taylor and my social media is Nandi Amaya on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow me at Amaya type underscore. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'm so happy to have all of you. For, so for those of you who aren't familiar with the league yet, you need to be. So this is the Basketball Beauties League and you are a group of models, actresses, entertainment folks, awesome people, right? It's all in yes. this league together. So tell us about the league. Well, um, <laughs> so it is it is an entertainment league for sure. We have that, but we also have, you know, professionals. Like the one sitting right next to us is a rocket scientist. <laughs> we will be talking about that. Like, <laughs> you know, so it, it's, it's full of women. Um, you know, we all know that basketball doesn't get the credit that it deserves when you live in the basketball world. Um, basketball Beauties Constant gives us a platform to network and meet other women who play basketball, have passed in basketball, and some people who are still currently playing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a good place to have some good hoop, get some good runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with Dawn. Um, I think the league is, like, amazing for women that, like, you know, they want to play at a competitive level because there's a lot of – there's some basketball leagues. There's not a lot of women's basketball leagues around here, but there's some, um, but they're not as competitive as Basketball Beauties. Mm -hmm. I feel like Basketball Beauties is, like, almost semi-pro. We have people that – currently play overseas that have played in the WNBA like mm -hmm. Don um, that have played in college um, so I, I think it's a great platform to kind of like mix that like competitive drive with like anything in entertainment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it's been around for how many years now about two this will be season three yeah so mm -hmm. it, it just depends on when the seasons actually start but I guess it's going into about the third year now, yeah. so it's been... Yeah, before the league actually began, we were doing, like, women's games, yeah. like, fundraiser games um, mm -hmm. against each other, um, and then they created the league. Mm -hmm. How many different teams are in the league? Six total. Six total. We've been but, trying yeah. to get it, like, to get Jude, who is the creator of Basketball mm -hmm. Beauties, the Basketball Beauties League, to get more um, teams. But it stays competitive at six, and it keeps yeah. it exclusive where, you know what, the best players are required to mm -hmm. be here. So mm -hmm. now it's it's still six teams, but it's six competitive, really talented women. Yeah. Well, we were talking earlier because there was some Instagram talk that is actually moving to New York as well, and that there's mm, going to be yeah. a branch of you guys out there, too. So we'll, we'll have to wait for more news on that oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wonder yeah. if we're going to turn it into this national league, we start awesome. playing national championships. Mm -hmm. In different states. Yeah. 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 That awesome. would be cool. Yeah. That would be really How great. has it grown just in the, the three seasons now? Oh my God, it's gone. Like somebody like Nandi, who's mm -hmm. extremely talented, this would be her first year, rookie year in the mm -hmm. league. But the girl can play some basketball. Yes. So, um, you know, and the first year it was kind of getting established. So we weren't able to attract what women would call real basketball players because all we know for women's basketball is college, WNBA, or overseas. Mm -hmm. There's no median for women. It yeah. just, they don't have that platform. So as it's grown, of course, it's attracted real hoopers to be like, you know what? Dang, this is where I can get real runs. This is where I can play and play mm -hmm. against women where I don't feel like I'm doing any discredit to the game mm -hmm. so year three it's it's dope man yeah, yeah. Dope. i think yes. that's what attracted me especially yeah. moving from virginia um i graduated from virginia state university and i moved out here and i instantly like i'm like yo like i want to join this league i see i see a lot of people um like competitive players a lot of people networking entertainment players and it was like something that was a good platform so i'm like i definitely want to be a part of that so mm -hmm, yeah for sure well we have one more that joined Yay. we won't make you run sprints for being being late. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do burpees. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. Thank and you. Okay. Can, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you guys out here will recognize this face. 
Yeah, yeah, your yeah, camera yeah. now, right here, sorry. Oh, right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm like, does my headphones look weird? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You look good, girl. You're okay. good, yeah. Okay, Just Hi. keep that little mic close to your mouth and you're good, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Tell everybody out there your name, where they can follow you on social media. Hey, my name is Erica Ringor, and you can follow me on Instagram at my name, E-R-I-K-A-R-I-N-G-O-R. Ringor. Mm -hmm. like like a superhero, but, <laughs> right, really, but kind of. And you hoopers out there probably recognize her from Love and Basketball. Sidra, basketball, hey. yeah. Sidra in the building. Hi, <laughs> Can I do an annoying fan thing and yes. just ask for my one favorite quote? Yes. <laughs> do, do you know? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what it is. Yeah, I don't okay, know yeah. what it is. <laughs> Never let a freshman take you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it. When I came, we came into college, we knew, like, uh, oh, yeah. If I'm a freshman, I got to find a way to take that mm -hmm. senior spot. <laughs> Freshman's got it bad. So oh, so that was weird. Oh, the best. Well, thank you. So we've just started kind of talking about how the league got started, how it's grown in the first couple years. Um, anything that you've, how you've witnessed it grow and kind of take off? Oh, yeah. I was one of the OGs mm -hmm. when the, we walked into this little dusty gym and I was like, Jude, what is this? <laughs> I don't know if anybody was, I think like, it was me and Britt. <laughs> and we walked in, I was like, um, okay. I was like, Jude, where, where's everybody? He's like, no. So no, it, it started literally from the ground up. And mm. um, I actually appreciate it because this is, I don't know what they've said, but this is not like a normal league. Mm -hmm. And girls are like, I want to play in the league. I'm like, mm. <laughs> yeah. like seriously, like, it's not just anyone can play. Like, you actually have to know how to play basketball. Mm -hmm. It's not some just little cute league on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's like elbows and profanity sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dawn, you know, she's cute over here with she's little fighting. It's getting okay. pretty. It gets okay. pretty. Yeah. Getting those four lines. No mercy. <laughs> so, yeah, no. So, I, the fact that it's grown so much and then, like, the quality of women that play in it, mm -hmm. um, that's the only reason why I play. Because I was like, Jude, I don't want to get hurt, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Just, so, I appreciate it. And we have a, you know, we have a following and it inspires other people, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's cool. Mm -hmm. How would somebody go about uh, getting on the team or trying out or what's the process for that? I just say, call Jude, yeah. <laughs> go to Basketball Beauties yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and DM them and say, hey, and then, like, I've literally sent three girls to him. I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know, but go to their Instagram and then DM them, tell them what you want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we we have open runs before um, the league starts too. This year we only had two, yeah. Yeah. but um, that get that gets gives people like a good idea. Like, can this person actually play? Mm -hmm. And then um, I I don't really know how Jude does it, but somehow he figures out who's going to be on what. Well, team. yeah, I mean, when it initially started, when the, it was players that we didn't know where they were coming from, or Jude may not know where they're coming from, so it's like, okay, let me do these open runs to see. But now you're having people that are coming in with these basketball resumes where mm. it's like, okay, there's no real need to see this person play. I've, you know, I know who this person is or yeah. they played at this specific institution. And so, yeah, we don't need to see it. Mm -hmm. So now it's just like, man, you just got all these talented people coming yeah. in. And it's like, how can we fit them in? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's a great problem to have. Watch it <laughs> yeah. grow, right? You play? Yeah, I played at Nebraska. Yeah. Yes. I know. I might need to practice mm -hmm. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, it's been a little bit of a while. <laughs> but, yeah, that's how I started following you guys because the, there's not – I knew about the Men's Entertainment League out here for mm -hmm. a while, and I was like, there's never stuff for women. And now through the show, I've started to research stuff like that. I was telling these guys that I didn't know there was a female equivalent to the L.A. Kings hockey team called the L.A. Lions. And so that's one thing I've been loving about working with this is getting to meet people like you doing these wonderful, you know, organizations taking women's sports and, you know, women's things to the next level. Yeah. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do you guys, do you have practice schedules or is everybody practice on their own or how does that work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I played yesterday. <laughs> right. I should have texted you. Yeah. I yeah. actually was on set yesterday. I got I booked a campaign and they had us doing suicide <laughs> defensive slides. Yeah. I'm like, this is preseason of college. Oh, no. <laughs> so right now I'm a little sore. <laughs> but yeah, um, for the practices though, it just depends on your team. It's like any professional team. Your success comes from whatever you decide to put in. Mm -hmm. Some teams, like the team actually who won the championship two years in a row, but boo. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, they <laughs> actually held practices and have plays and mm-hmm. stuff, you know. Oh, serious. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. How, how you think we got the championship twice? <laughs> Don't ask me that question because you're not going to ask. You're not going to like what I Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And where are your where are the games played out? Can people fans come and watch you? The Expo, they, c- Expo Center. Mm-hmm. Expo Center in downtown. Um, What's well, King? It's, it's King Boulevard and Figueroa, where the yeah. old sports arena used to be. Yeah. So literally, the intersection of King Boulevard and Figueroa. It's a huge um, center with like a pool, soccer field. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called the Exposition mm-hmm. Center, like rec- recreational center. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so. it's it's open to public, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Anybody Check the can website. Come yeah. yeah. Well, Whatever the exact the address is thirty nine eighty Bill, Bill Robertson, Robertson Lane. Yeah. Watch the games. <laughs> Write it down. Be there. Thirty nine eighty Bill Robertson Lane. Wow, you got the voice. <laughs> got it on. <laughs> and then you said the new league is starting June tenth. Yes, right, right? June tenth. And it just runs straight six weeks in a row, or what's kind of the schedule like for the, for the upcoming season? Thirteen weeks. Mm-hmm. Thirteen weeks. I, I might be wrong. I think it's ten season games, or nine season games, three playoffs, three playoffs. and champions. Yeah. Okay. Championship. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, let me ask a couple other questions about the league before we get. I want to get to each one of you individually as well. But I'm going to ask, so what does ba- being a basketball beauty mean to each of you? Like, stop Don, you, you stop you. Don, you want to go first? Oh, yeah. Um, well, being a basketball beauty for me means being a part of something that represents women in the right way when it comes to sports. Mm-hmm. Um, it shows that you're not just placed into one box of one dynamic of what a woman's athlete can be. You can be mm-hmm. anything. Um, so for me, it's just representative of, you know, where we are in this time of, with women and Indicative of the fact that we can do whatever we want to mm-hmm. do and be successful at it. So I'm I'm yeah. proud to be a part of it for that reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean I think Don hit it right on the nose. I being a part of this league just gives us like a platform, like one to be competitive basketball players, and then two also to show people like you can be womanly, you can be feminist, mm-hmm. but, like you can be. Um, like pretty and beautiful and I don't mean just by like putting on makeup but mm-hmm. like just like the the I guess the message that this league is giving to people is that women can do the same thing as men they can look pretty they can look sweaty and mm-hmm. get get grimy on the court they can do everything and the fact that this league encompasses a lot of people that are in entertainment that can that can use this platform to like showcase their skills and show women and girls that are growing up that they can do anything. We have models, actresses, we have um, teachers, we have um, engineers, we have flight attendants, (laughs) they can travel the world if they want to. Um, That's what I love about this Mm -hmm. league is that it, it, it gives us that place where we can play ball that we've always wanted to do our whole entire lives, but also inspire other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they hit everything, like, right on the nail. But I also wanted to add in, like, for me, being, like, the rookie or the new girl, mm-hmm. um, I think coming in and seeing people who've already been in the league um, for, like, since it's uh, begun, um, it, sh- it gives me the opportunity to network with people, to actually – um, have someone to maybe look up to, seeing that I'm new to LA, they've been here longer than me. Um, I can kind of get information from them to know like which way to go, so I don't go the wrong way. You know, mm-hmm. just to have people to look up to, um, I think it's cool too. Yeah, yeah. very helpful in the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. needs yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess you? everybody looked yeah. at me. Um, <laughs> what, okay, so what does basketball beauties mean to me? Was that the question? Yeah, being one. Being mm-hmm. one. Um, I think you said it where it's like it gives there's so many women from like different sizes different (laughs) colors different nationalities that all have one thing in common we'll ball you up (laughs) like seriously like it's not you know so um for me like a lot of my guy friends are like oh my god she she looks like that and she can play Mm -hmm. like literally that's the Mm -hmm. it's like yeah like we don't look like that all the time Mm -hmm. like we you know i'm saying so it's Mm -hmm. it's this image of of you know looking a certain way means you can't play basketball or be in it. And everyone in here understands what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So this league just wipes that away. And, you know, most of my friends who I've invited, especially my guy friends, they'll see, you know, one of the models, like, cross over someone, and, and they're like, 
I'm like, yeah, we, we're basketball players. It doesn't matter what we, you know what I'm saying? Right. We yeah. play mm-hmm. basketball. That's it. Mm-hmm. So this league kind of wipes that, that stereotype, all that out of there and just puts us on one platform, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. we're basketball players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> you guys have kind of touched on this one, but I want to go a little further. Also, how does it embrace kind of the word beauty in your eyes? I mean, beauty is... Um, can be defined it's as, subjective mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it's subjective to who it is i mean i've met some beautiful women in this league that have hearts of gold you know and created lifetime friendships you mm-hmm. know because it's good people mm-hmm. and so it, beauty yeah it's some girls you're like dang she, she mm-hmm. fine. But then, you know, you see some people and they they have good hearts. And like, you know, Nandi said, the reason why she's able to find somebody that she can get advice from is because somebody has a beautiful heart or a beautiful Mm -hmm. soul that's going to lead her in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. You're so sweet. Ah! (laughs) You're so sentimental. You're so fun. (laughs) How do you guys feel like this league is affecting young girls out there? Positively, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Actually, it'd be cool if we could get more... We should invite like basketball teams, high school mm-hmm. girls, mm-hmm. like yeah. you know. I just I just thought of that. So maybe we can mm-hmm. talk to Jude about it and just inviting, you know, more young girls to the league. What about um, those camps that yeah. we do too for those? Yeah, mm-hmm. we do yeah, like, a lot of like camps at at the same gym, right? Mm-hmm. Um, doing little like trainings and things for little kids to learn. Um, mm-hmm. So we do give back to the community too, which is awesome. Um, I do love the fact that like we can have this league where it's like a bunch of beautiful women that are doing all these different things and we can show like younger kids like you don't have to be this butchy like masculine person to go and play basketball or to grow yeah. up and play basketball you could play basketball and grow up and do all kinds of different things you could mm-hmm. go to college with your your basketball skills and get a degree and go and do something whatever you want to do exactly. mm-hmm. um, or you yeah. can you know it's just it gives them that choice it doesn't put them in the box of like yeah. oh you have to be a tomboy you can you totally can you can rock that out if that's mm-hmm. what you choose mm-hmm. to do but also what they refuse to believe is that you know women who want to dress up and want to put on dresses and wear heels yes. also want to take off those heels and throw on a pair of sneaks and mm-hmm. ball it yes. us you know thank you that was the whole yeah. beginning of Tom Girl yes. that's, yeah, yeah. There's, people don't get that balance a lot yeah. Yeah. So there's a whole whole bunch of you guys out there. Yes, <laughs> there are. It. Yeah, it's so awesome. Well, that's because I do want to um, let everybody get to know each one of you individually more, too, so they can all get on board and follow you guys all season long. And I want to hear the different backgrounds that you're from, too, because I think that's fascinating. You all have different stories. Mm-hmm. So, well, um, I think I have photos, though, so let's actually, we're going to go love. in this. <laughs> oh, I only did two of each, so, okay. So, we're going to, we'll start with Dawn. Okay. Yeah, let's see Dawn. <laughs> I Dawn. Yes, the abs. Abs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I love that picture. So this is the good, like the balance of like you heart, rock in the abs, hardcore, you know, <laughs> ball, and then beautiful, you know, mm-hmm. just. You know. So yeah, tell about like so you're an actress now, and tell me about yeah. the things you're doing and kind of your other career. And, right. And, just... and it's funny. The first picture actually was on set of a show mm-hmm. um, that was based around basketball. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I do have a huge basketball background. It's been something I've played for a very long time, and it's taken me all over the world. Um, I've played at a professional level. You know, started young and just went all the way pro, but. Um, As much as I love basketball, I do have to say that I love acting more. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for people to believe because of, um, you know, how much time and effort I put into basketball. But that's just who I am. It's just putting forth everything that I have and whatever is in front Mm -hmm. of me at the time. Um, So I actually made the conscious choice to give up basketball to pursue my dreams because acting came before basketball. Basketball just took off, and that was a God-given talent that I couldn't deny. I had to do something with it, or I would have been regretful for the rest of my mm-hmm. life. Um, so now I'm able to do both. Basketball Beauties allows yeah. me to do both. And I mean, I think that is just a, a blessing, you know, um, and able to play basketball and still able to pursue my dream that I love so much. And that's actually from a recent film that mm-hmm. just got released on Amazon Prime called Loyalty, and it will be um, released as a feature. Um, 
it, it's a lot coming with this film. I'm really Yay. excited about it. But yeah, congrats. So that's, yeah. yeah, thank that's you, awesome. thank you. I, I think um, there's actually in the acting world a lot of the athlete mentality can be put to that. Do you it's feel the same? And can hilarious. Talk about that? I'm, I know Erica knows yeah. this. I feel like in every acting class that I have or any conversation, they always reference. It's not even sports. They reference basketball. <laughs> it's like, oh, when Kobe Bryant goes to the gym, he stays there and he does his work. And they're like, well, that's what Samuel L. Jackson does. It's like always this reference to basketball. And I'm like. God, you speaking to me, okay? <laughs> so there's a reason for everything. Yeah. So yeah, that's it's it's been really cool. You know, this journey has been amazing, and I'm enjoying every step of it. Mm -hmm. And and still being able to hold on tight to basketball in mm -hmm. some way has mm -hmm. been extremely important. And I don't feel like I've lost anything. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I've gained the opportunity to do both. And even the, the training wise, I feel like the athlete mind works in the acting because you're either training for different roles mm -hmm. or like if I'm you've saying. never if you if you don't play sports, it's a mentality that you it's hard to understand. But once you it's a competitive thing. Also knowing that you need the people around you to succeed. That's a mentality that I think that as women we need to grow more into mm -hmm. is the fact that we can help build each other instead of trying to compete with one another. Mm -hmm. Society sure. makes us feel like, okay, me and her look alike. I need to fight against mm -hmm. her instead of saying, how can we come together and build an empire? Mm -hmm. um, that's a basketball line. You can't win a basketball game by yourself. you got mm -hmm. five people on the court and another five people on the bench that we need all ten of you guys to win. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's the same thing with acting. You know, you have to create a community and a network around you that allows you to build together and to, to win together. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's sure. very... Yeah. it's. It's simultaneous, and it's like, man, it's like living in a dual world, just doing something different. And this time, I'm dressed up with my hair straight. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's cool. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So I know you said that this Amazon film's coming out. Anything else next for coming up for you? That thing. Yeah, I also have a project um, coming out on Hulu. It's called uh, Bando. It's American crime series. Um, and outside of that, it's it's a grind. Maybe in <laughs> another month, I'll have something else I can tell you. Yeah. You know, constantly auditioning, constantly studying. Um, the work and you know I'm just I'm just streamlined ahead waiting to mm -hmm. see what's next and you know just taking every opportunity as a new blessing to to inspire and to grow and to be a better human being and individual awesome fantastic all right we're going to Erica next oh, <laughs> yeah that smile oh, like that. okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, just random from all your guys' oh my gosh. Instagram okay. accounts. So funny. <laughs> yeah, so tell us more about you. I know we all know from Love and Basketball and you know what was working on that film? Talk a little bit about that. How uh, was that film for you? That was amazing. It was my first if I don't know how it fell in my lap. I, what's crazy is I didn't have representation when I got it. So it was uh, my cousin called and said, Hey, Spike Lee is having um open calls for basketball players. Now, the ego was in me at this time. Eric had an ego, a little bit of an ego, for no reason. I don't even know why I had an ego. But I was like, I don't do cattle calls. Ooh. I said, nah, I don't do cattle calls. And she was like, oh, OK. And I was like, well, wait, what is it again? Who is it again? <laughs> yeah, she said, it's Spike Lee. And I said, hmm. So I was like, I was like no, nah, I'm not going. So she told me the information. And actually, the auditions were being held at my old high school. That's what was crazy. That's why I was like, oh. So now that I look back. 20 years, 18 years, like, the universe just lined that up for me. Like, I couldn't have planned that. Mm -hmm. Like, the way that it just went and how I got it and then where it's brought me is crazy. So, you know me. I'm huge on energy, universe. I'm huge mm -hmm. on that. So, um, when I got it, uh, again, like, I was fresh out of college. I had been doing student films, extra work. Like, got my, my SAG card on the Jamie Foxx show. Mm -hmm. Like, first three episodes on it. Like, and they're showing it. I was hoochie number one. Don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, laugh. Yes. Don't laugh. But I've had people, like, literally in the last two weeks, they've DM'd me the screenshot, and I'm in this, these booty shorts, and I'm at the bar <laughs> with Jamie and Eddie Griffin. And I'm like, oh, my. God. And I remember this day, but I was, for me, I, I was just hoochie number one, but I was, like, there for work, like, even though. So, anyway, this is crazy. So, just I just remember booking it and, like, being on set and like and that wasn't even like it was everything that happened after like filming it I was still kind of like I was in heaven I was like I didn't even I don't even think I slept mm. like when you're that excited like I was just up and I mm. was just everywhere and it was like two weeks of you know we shot for two weeks and then when it came out I still didn't realize how big the film was 
you know, I didn't yeah. know until like Love and Basketball really got huge after it came out on video. And then people started seeing it on TV and mm -hmm. word and it was like more word of mouth. That's when when people started like recognizing me with sunglasses and a hat on, mm -hmm. that's when I was like, Oh. I was like Like I didn't I didn't understand it until mm -hmm. two or like that's what's crazy. I didn't really understand my impact until like two years into it. To where people were like really like you impacted me this way, mm -hmm. and then I was like, oh, wow, now I have a responsibility, because people, like, I have a responsibility now. So, you know, we just had our 18-year anniversary, April 21st, mm -hmm. when it was released. Yeah. 18 wow, years man. Yes. Dude, I was like, I was, what? Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> you? Okay. That's you. Rookie? Yeah. Rookie? Come on, freshman. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm going to date myself, too, because I remember I watched it with my teammates, and we were in the theater in college, you know? Okay. So I was like, okay. yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, what I love about it, because I rewatched it again today, and I'm like, it's still freaking fantastic. Like, it's, it's a fine. classic. Yes, and it was fine. I mean, the soundtrack's amazing. Oh, also. yeah. It never gets old. Like, oh, never. 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 You know what's oh, funny so about it is when people, when, when you don't play basketball and you're like, oh, Love and Basketball is one of my favorite movies. Because I'm like, it makes me realize, like, I thought it just was me because mm -hmm. we played basketball. But... I mean, worldwide, it's anybody. It oh, just, yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah. Like, but I'm like, man. So hearing oh. this story, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> when, you know how a lot of sports movies you'll watch, and I think as an athlete, you, they, they never feel real. Or you're like, that's mm -hmm. not how people play. Or you know, whatever. Like, I just, yeah. I feel like the whole movie nailed what it's really like to, to mm -hmm. play. Like, I thought it was just done really, really well. Well, Gina Prince Bythewood, director, writer, still a good friend of mine, super, like, she's so dope. Like, Gina's dope. Um, she made it a point to surround Sana with everybody that played basketball so everyone around her we were super competitive mm -hmm. like semi I'm talking about like the scene where I'm like grabbing on her and mm -hmm. it's like that like Gina was like I'm gonna let you all play for 20 minutes just open court and we're gonna film you and we were like so we're just playing like mm -hmm. no like no acting she was like so that whole grabbing on Sanaa and pushing her, like I was pushing her. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so after, I remember her asking me after we cut, she walks up to me, she goes, Erica, she was like, you like me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. And I was like, yes, Sanaa. I, like, I was playing. I said, it's yeah. just intense. She was like, oh my God. I was like, <laughs> but I remember her at, so, but we were, yeah, we were bumping and I was just like, that's, that's basketball. Mm -hmm. Like we weren't playing. Mm -hmm. And the other girls, you know, some of the girls, they were even, they had been further in their basketball careers than I have. Because I didn't play in college. I played intramural. Mm -hmm. um, and low-key, the, the whole thing about the freshman taking your spot, that was me. That happened to me in college. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. I don't, I don't even think I've ever, I don't know if I've said that. But, like, some people know. But I was a senior. I went to Long Beach State. Um, and it was between me and a freshman. There was two spots. There was one spot. And it was two of us. Uh, and I remember the coach called me in. And I wasn't, what's crazy is I wasn't very good with plays. And I never, I just wasn't in high school. Like, it would take me a minute to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just, I, I didn't judge myself. I was like, look, I'm, I might need some extra time. Mm -hmm. I need, might need to take this home. But that was one of the reasons. And she was just explaining to me why I didn't make the team. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. But then I was like, this girl is a freshman. And I'm literally, I was graduating in like six months, whatever. So I was like, dang. And then I booked Love and Basketball. And I was like. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so that's so that, that's cool. what I'm saying. I'm like, wow. So university be playing games with, yeah. <laughs> you know. So um, yeah. So it was is amazing. And this, like I said, everything after just the people that I've been able to meet, like athletes. I've done like all the celebrity games that I did when it first came out. Like me and Moses Malone were like chilling mm -hmm. on the bus driving to a game. I was like, it was like Shaq and like all these actors that I've looked up to, but also basketball players and. Just literally, like the people that I've been able to meet, mm -hmm. um, who respect my work, um, that's like the payoff. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. to this day, 18 years later, people are like, "Can I get an autograph?" I'm like, "Sure, mm -hmm. come on," you know. Yeah. So, yeah, like I, I like I am so grateful, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. it. It's changed and, my life. And what are you primarily? F I know, like on your Instagram, your goal is to inspire. What kind of things are you working on now or involved with? So, so many things. So, <laughs> I, I do Herbal Life full time. I'm a nutrition coach with Herbal Life. I've been doing that six and a half years. Don, I'm still waiting for your phone call. She gonna call me out? Yeah. <laughs> right, she's gonna blow you up we, we were choosing to meet, meet up last week. But I'm gonna blow her up right now. <laughs> no, but um, I've been doing that, and I, I have a film out. Uh, it's called Devious Nanny that was aired on Lifetime. Hmm. But you can go on YouTube. 
type in Devious Nanny, and it'll pull up the full episode. Um, it's actually not your typical Lifetime movie. It's actually really good, and I'm not even saying it because I'm in it. But it's, <laughs> it's actually it's, 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 it's a cool movie, so you all can go see that. Um, I have, I'm doing a lot of stuff like with investing, like business, like I'm trying to be a billionaire. Like, that's good plan. Like, yeah. honestly, like, Tell I'm, us how. Um, exactly. Billionaire mindset, I'm, you know, so I really haven't, I'm not limiting myself. So I'm kind of just yeah. saying yes to everything. I don't know if y'all saw that movie, yeah. Yes Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jim Carrey, just say mm-hmm. yes and yeah. see what happens. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a good so mentality. That's, yeah, that's kind of where yep. I'm at. So I'm, I'm busy, but it's, it's, uh, I'm happy. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. about it. That's great. All right, let's move next to heartbreak. Hey. <laughs> Uh-oh, we got a couple got shots of you. <laughs> okay. Hey. Heartbreak so right. dope. Yeah, yeah, you have so much, so many things. So I'm just let you take it oh, over now. God. These are fascinating. Go where, ahead. Where do I start? start? Let's start with your music. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm a recording artist. I I sing, songwrite, um, and produce. I actually started out producing. Um, and, and then from producing, I wanted to write songs, so I started writing songs, and then, um, to write songs, you gotta kinda sing or do something, right? So I, then I started to learn how to sing, and now I, now I'm just doing everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, um... And you have videos on YouTube, people can watch your music videos. I have Mm -hmm. a couple music videos out. I just dropped a project, a collaboration project, um, with one of my friends, Stevie Dub. He's a dope, super dope hip-hop artist. Um, we just dropped that like a couple weeks ago, so that's all out on Spotify, Apple Music, What's all the that name? stuff. What's the name? It's yeah. called Perspectives, um, and it's like every song is just a dual song with me and him, um, and it's super, it, it definitely gives like a different perspective um, in each song because I'm giving my perspective and he's giving his perspective in every single song. So it's so interesting <laughs> to see like how he's going to think of something mm. and how I'm going to think mm-hmm. of something. Um, so yeah, so that's out now. I'm currently working on my solo project, um, which I just recorded two songs this weekend, nice. which I like, I never have time to do anything. So <laughs> I was like so happy. I'm really excited about that. Um, so that's going to be coming out hopefully I'm aiming for a couple months from now, I'm going to be dropping a solo project. Mm, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. I will look for that. Yeah. <laughs> and then on top of that, you're rocket science? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I kind of have this yeah. like, full-time job right. with yeah. Yeah. rockets and yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, minor. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, <laughs> By the way, she was saying I like it. Like, after I got out of producing my song, I just jump over. <laughs> I know my life is literally so weird because I like, I go to work every day and I'm like out here building rockets and then I come home and I record a song That's and then awesome. the next day I'm like, oh, we have basketball, we have open runs and then <laughs> Sunday comes and we have basketball games and. Now I'm on a show talking about basketball. I'm like, <laughs> what? What am I doing? I don't know sometimes. But um, yeah, so I'm I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, we build rockets. Uh, I I work in manufacturing, so I work on um, like writing the instructions for how to build them and stuff. Wow. Um, but tell them the company you work for. Uh, like, SpaceX. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they knows the little bitty the small, SpaceX. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh my god, this is why I don't like talking about myself. I'm like, people are so confused when they talk to me. Like, wait, you do what? And then you do what? And then wait, yeah. huh? Like, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's my daytime job. And then I also play basketball. So I grew up playing basketball. It's actually really funny how my life works because I was just telling you earlier how like I was obsessed with music when I was younger and I carried the CD player around with me um, all the time. And then it broke. And um, my mom didn't have enough money to like buy me a new one. She's like, "You're not getting a new one, so figure it out." So I opened it up, figured out what was wrong with it, fixed it, put it back together, and then I still got to use it. And so ever since then, my mom was like, "Oh, can you fix the stereo? Can you fix the TV? Can you do this, do that?" So I was literally fixing everything um, my whole life growing up. So like I was like, "Okay, engineering is going to be my backup. I'm going to be in the WNBA. That's my goal. That's what I'm going to do." And then, um, like, but I like music, so maybe if basketball doesn't work, I'll do music. And then engineering's just like, <laughs> that, that'll that just help me to fall back if, if none of these work out. Um, and so I thought I was gonna be in the WNBA, that didn't work, so I went to college. I ended up starting the basketball team at my college, at UC Merced. 
Um, Because I was the inaugural class. There were no, there was no clubs, no sports, nothing there. So I went there specifically to start the basketball team. So I did that, um, majored in mechanical engineering, and then um, started doing all these internships. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I I interned with like Procter & Gamble for like three years uh you know like mr clean for breeze yeah. swiffer i worked on that stuff and so i was like oh my god i'm gonna be an engineer like forget all this other stuff but like i was still playing basketball and then i started producing when i was in college and so i just mm-hmm. like became this like oh my gosh what am i gonna do in life um so it's just funny how life works out that it just like ended up working out the way it did i i got a full-time job as a mechanical engineer i still do music and and make music um for fun and then i somehow like ended up in this basketball league i moved to la ran into jude a couple times and now we have a basketball Hmm. league i'm like oh my gosh i can do everything that i want to do so yeah i feel like i just talked so much (laughs) no it's great (laughs) amazing all right, and last but not least, we have Nandi. Yes. All right, a couple <laughs> pics of you. Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> baller. Yeah, you real baller. A little fashion <laughs> shot there. Hello, Hello Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell us more about you. Um, I'm from Flint, Michigan, and I went to school at Virginia State University. I played there. I played basketball there. And I graduated last May, and I literally moved here July 15th. Um, it was so hard to transition to move here. I had to, like, pack all my boxes, get them shipped, and ship my car, find an apartment before I even moved here. And so um, once I finally got here, um, I got a job as to be a flight attendant. And so I, start being, I started flight attending. I actually recently just quit. Um... <laughs> due to a lot of reasons but um yeah that's basically it right now Mm -hmm. and um so i'm working on a brand that'll be launched june 9th um so y'all can stay tuned for that it's called meraki 94 um and yeah so it'll be launched june 9th but (laughs) any more details like what can you what kind of brand um so i'll be selling swimwear and uh, fitness apparel sports bras legging sets um spandex sets and then i'll also have my vlogs on my website and then i'll have a link to where you can donate towards my city because they have a water crisis i don't know if you guys know Mm -hmm. about that they have um like we've been going through the water crisis for about three or four years and a lot of people are unaware of it so i definitely want to um bring it to the surface and Mm -hmm. show people like what we're going through and that it's real because like i know a lot of people when they find out i'm from flint they're like they laugh about it like oh like you have dirty water and it's like that's not it's not funny Mm -hmm. like it's not because people really I have friends and family who are like still victims of it so you know Mm -hmm. and you have like babies who are victims of it they they um so basically uh we had lead in our water so um once you drink it or it gets in your system it basically messes with your nerves and it's like i can't i don't really not explain it like i don't want to say it the wrong way Mm -hmm. but um over time it damages your nerve system so it's serious yeah yeah Yeah. yeah yeah Well, that's a great cause, what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah, you. for sure. Well, what a group. I mean, you guys are all <laughs> fantastic, all these things. It's so, so, so special. Okay, before, I know we only have a couple minutes left, so let's just talk a little bit about what are your guys' goals for the league? Like, what do you hope to see in the next five years? Or, you know, <laughs> what are things you're going to work towards? Let's <laughs> mm-hmm. point at you. <laughs> I think um, what's unfortunate is just for women's basketball, it just is not enough it's it's not enough platforms for it you know so i hate to say this but when you play women's basketball after it's done you kind of hit a dead end so a lot of people find themselves after finishing women's basketball because you don't make as much money as the men you just Mm -hmm. don't after it's done you are basically starting over brand new yeah Um, and so it's it's really it's really unfortunate you can see some of your your best women's basketball players and they're fine because they'll make the you know make most of the money but women who are they fall into this mid category Mm -hmm. somebody like Mm -hmm. just so people can understand like the caliber player as um in the nba in, in the nba let's say somebody who's like a role player in the nba a role player in women's basketball once you're done you are you are broke. And I'm just, I mean, that, that money goes fast. Um, so this is going to provide an opportunity for women. And hopefully if we get the right investors, if we get people around that, you know, like, oh, I, I think that's doing something. I think that's inspiring women. I think that can make some money. This could build to be something like 
the G League or the D League for for men because mm -hmm. we don't have that. It's either it goes from college, you either go to Europe or you go to the WNBA. After that, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So hopefully something like Basketball Beauties can trigger something in somebody be like, okay, let's do these semi-pro leagues that'll pay women, that I still give them a platform to play. That's not quite the WNBA, it's not quite Europe, but it is something. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so that's the goal. You know, the goal mm -hmm. is to always do better for, you know, the world. And I think that's what Jude is trying to do is to provide an opportunity, to provide an opportunity for women mm -hmm. in sports. Because unfortunately we just, when it comes to financially, we, they don't meet us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> So hopefully, you know, and right now Jude still, he's he works with us talking about, you know, hoping to find ways to even pay this league. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about sponsorships and people who can believe in women's sports, women's basketball. And, you know, that's the goal. You know, it starts small, but at least there's an idea and it can mm -hmm. trigger an amazing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, thing. So that's what we hope for. And, you yeah. know, we're just, we're the catalyst for it here in L.A. And we'll see what New York's talking about. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah. 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 Fun. Yeah. and to like piggyback off what she said about like finding yourself, because I think growing up, when you grow up playing basketball, it's like, oh, my dream is to go to the WNBA or play professional basketball. But once you realize that you're not going to pursue that or you don't have the mm -hmm. choice to pursue that, um, it goes back to finding yourself like, um, Basketball was all you know, so now I have to start over. And I can I can say that because I'm actually transitioning and doing that right now for myself. So it's kind of like, just just how you said, I forgot, um, you said something like, I'm saying yes to everything, like every mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. like you don't want to turn down anything because you never know what you'll end up being good at or do at until yeah. you try it. Mm -hmm. So like for me now, it's just like I'm going to try whatever comes my way, whatever yeah. opportunities I get. Yeah. I think the other thing that can be difficult is once you've spent that much time focused on, on basketball, like you, you don't do other things. Like you're not doing college internships like other people because mm -hmm. you're at practice or you're not getting that mm -hmm. job. Like, so I think it's harder, too, to come back and try to then get into some sort of work professional when other people now have about a 10-year mm -hmm. jump on you yeah. of doing yep. things yep. as well. It can be a struggle. It's an identity thing, too. Yeah. You know, yeah, you're, no longer, sure. you're no longer heartbreak the basketball player. Now you're heartbreak the who, you know? And mm -hmm. that, that's been an adjustment. I mean, people go through some major mental issues yeah. with women's mm -hmm. basketball because in college, you're a athlete student you're not a student athlete. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, it's yeah, like basketball sure. and so I mean it's just the way that it is so yeah. all you can do is try to find an opportunity plant a seed and hope that it grows into something mm -hmm. great okay. last question for each of you what's your goals like if you if you have a particular goal for yourself in the league this season like you know rookie like what if you have a goal anybody that has anything they're going after this year to be champ you think? Oh, I mean, yeah, our, <laughs> of course. Championship for for us. That's my goal. That's all I okay, well, I'm in agreement because yes, we're yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for Thunder. <laughs> Dawn, I'm sensing so, some. Hey, uh, you know me. I know. You know me. I'm She's gonna talk and love you at the same uh -huh. time. <laughs> I think the the goal is to always win. Um, but. I think I'm hoping just to uh, more more so network and just to get in, in the um. I'm trying to think in like the pattern of playing again because I've been out so I, I'm just looking forward to just playing like because I love basketball so mm -hmm. I'm really excited Oh, that was cute. Yeah, they Ain't no sweetness, <laughs> okay, because the girl can play. I know. And, no, I guess I'm not even following. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to get that little back sweet smile. Girl back. She's breaking people's Aww. ankles and stuff. Right. No, honestly, like, I just want to have fun. Like, that's it. I mean, yeah. I like winning. I don't like losing. Yeah. I feel like that. But yeah. if it's a good game, it's like, let's just have fun. Like, yeah. you know, that's... I'm a clown, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm a clown. Any from you? MVP. Yeah. <laughs> okay, girl. I don't know. No, you're not. I just want to, uh, no, just want to make sure I can we get know. to the games because I mean, I, our yeah, lives I are so busy. Yeah. I just could. I can't even make all the games. But yeah, to have fun, meet some new, meet some new girls, play, have some good basketball. And hopefully, you know, we. I think what's important is we really are trying to get a fan base out, mm -hmm. people to come watch us play. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting. Like y'all gotta come watch us play, man. Yes. We got some. Yes. We got girls who can dunk. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Glad, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I only have like one minute left. But tell me, you did actually had a dunk contest during yeah. All Star Week, right? Oh, yes. So we yeah, have uh, Tammy Bronner, who is um, a Harlem Globetrotter. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a feat in itself because she was yep. one of the few women that has become a Harlem Globetrotter. She decided to do a women's uh, dunk contest. We did lower the rim a foot, but that, I mean, still. still. Mm. I mean, you have to get off the ground, get the actual ball, which is a foot 
in Lent yeah. itself over the rim um, and had a dunk contest. And she actually jumped over somebody and then dunked. So we Donica. have some athletic. Donica. Yeah, Donica Dale. And you guys can see that on their website. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. yeah. yeah. It's cool. Fantastic. Well, this has been such a treat. You guys are all amazing. I can't wa wait to watch. I will get to the game. I will bring my niece to watch you guys. I think it's fantastic hey. what you're doing. So tell everybody again, one quick, we'll go to each one where they can follow you on social media. Okay, you can follow me at the Don Raven, spelled just like that on every platform, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Find me there. <laughs> I'm Who is Heartbreak, and everything on my social media is Who is Heartbreak. Um, Nandi Amaya on Instagram, Twitter, Amaya Type. And Facebook, not you, Maya. Uh, Erica Ringor, E R I K A R I N G O O R on everything. All right. Well, that's it for us this week. You guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here again next week. Bye bye. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.